The objective today is to go over what the Intel manual says about the supplemental SSE3 instructions. So two years after SSE3, these came out, so that'd be 2006. And even more than when the original SSE came out, we got ourselves 32 instructions added. Now these additional 32 are represented by 14 mnemonics. And what's the purpose of all these supplemental SSE3 instructions? Simply to accelerate computations on packed integers. So the theme of today is packed. So of these 32 instructions, 12 of them will perform horizontal addition or subtraction. Six will evaluate absolute values. Two will perform multiply and add operations and speed up the evaluation of dot products. Two will accelerate packed integer multiply operations and produce integer values with scaling. And the last two instructions that perform uh, will perform a bitewise in place shuffle according to the second shuffle a control operand. That sounds like the most confusing of them. But if we add up 12 plus 6 plus uh, 6 again, we only get 24. So go to page 132. <laughs> There are six more and then two more, and now we're good with our 32. Uh, these six instructions negate packed integers in the destination operand if the sign of the corresponding element in the source operand is less than zero. So six instructions dealing with this whole less than zero idea. Now the two instructions that align data from the composite of two operands will be our actual final two. So the question is, how many categories of SSSE3 instructions can we find? And that will start here on page uh, 132. So let's begin. Horizontal addition and subtraction. FADW adds two adjacent signed 16-bit integers horizontally from the source and destination operands and packs the signed 16-bit results to the destination operand. Now this description right here is only one word different than the description for the next instruction, FAD SW. And just like I'm saying here with one word being off, <laughs> notice, you know, that blank spot right there for the operand uh, in the above description. But simply, this exact instruction will exist, however we're going to have saturated 16-bit results. So how about that? What's the difference between FADW and FADSW? And that is simply saturation. Now these first three are all about adding. So our last concept of adding, FAD with three Ds, this will just add two adjacent sine 32-bit integers, okay, instead of 16. So sine 32-bit integers horizontally from the source and destination operands and packs the sine 32-bit results to the destination operand. Now the three below are just so similar, similar, but instead of addition, we're talking subtraction. So that's that whole section, horizontal addition and subtraction. I will go ahead and let you read that if you'd like, but like I said, pretty much the exact same uh, process. We start with two 16-bit uh, commands, the difference is saturation, and then we'll talk about 32 bits for the last one. And if you thought that was easy, this next one, this next section is even easier. We got computes the absolute value of each signed byte data element. And then, instead of just a byte, the next instruction deals with a 16-bit six, data element. And then a 32-bit data element. And I'm being kind of uh, funny here by using the word chunk. Okay, now we only have uh, one instruction for multiply and add packed signed unsigned bytes. And I counted up those letters, there are nine of them, so that's quite a bit. This here will multiply each unsigned byte value with the corresponding signed byte value to produce an intermediate 16-bit signed integer. Each adjacent pair of 16-bit signed values are added horizontally. The signed saturated 16-bit results are packed to the destination operand. Okay, now section 584, uh, packed multiply high with round and scale. Now we're going to talk about uh, multiplying vertically each signed 16-bit integer from the destination operand with the corresponding signed 16-bit integer of the source operand. This is producing an in, in, in intermediate signed 32-bit integer. Now each of these intermediate 32-bit integers are truncated to the 18 most significant bits. And I wonder why 18? We're talking integers here, not floating points, so I'm curious about that one. 
Well, rounding will always be performed by adding 1 to the least significant bit of the 18-bit intermediate result. And the final result is obtained by selecting the 16 bits immediately to the right of the most significant bit of each 18-bit intermediate result and packed to the destination operand. And I don't even know what kind of question I can ask on that section, so let's just keep it moving. Um, packed shuffle bytes. This permutes each byte in place according to a shuffle control mask and the least significant three or four bits of each shuffle control byte of the control mask from the shuffle index. So I ask what is a shuffle control mask? Because whatever it is, the shuffle mask is unaffected and if the most significant bit, which is bit 7, of a shuffle control byte is set, the constant 0 is written in the result byte. Now we have a short description here, and that's nice of them to do this uh, forward slash w and a d. But what this says is um, this instruction negates each assigned integer element of the destination operand if the sign of the corresponding data, data element in the source operand is less than zero. So it negates it. Easy. And our last one for this video, a real short video, let's try to get to five questions. It says packed align right. So Align R or P align R. The source operand is appended after the destination operand, forming an intermediate value of twice the width of the operand. The result is extracted from the intermediate value into the destination operand by selecting the 128 bit or 64 bit value that are right aligned to the byte offsets specified by the immediate value. So, how about this for our last question? What does P align R stand for? A real easy one, just so you can end the video on a high level of confidence. Because after reading that section, I'm not feeling too confident. I'll need some real-life examples. But the purpose of these videos is simply to read the manual.